Hello everyone, welcome to Lectora Live, your inside track into Lectora, and today into Course Mill. Here we go. And we are back. Today we've got with us John Law. John Laws, I'm sorry. He is the Vice President of Learning Management Systems as well as global support for Trivantis. So without further ado, here is John Laws. Hey John, how are you today? Good, how are you? I'm doing great. And before we start, I wanna thank you for coming very last moment. We, we had a guest reschedule, and of course that always happens last moment. And I put out a, a call to Scott Barnett, your, your VP of Marketing, and, and he got you. So I'm very pleased. <laughs> we should have more yeah, cancellations. I, I, told I, a, I told him I was a third string quarterback. Didn't think I'd see action in the game, but here I am. So. <laughs> well, I'm glad you could make it. And uh, there's a lot of exciting things happening at Trivantis, and especially with the uh, the Course Mill LMS. And and for those who aren't familiar with with Trivantis's learning management system offerings. Can you just do a real quick description of what Course Mill is and what Course Mill Wave is? Sure. Course Mill is our flagship uh, full service LMS. Uh, it has everything in it you would expect in a standard LMS package. We, uh, you know, we certainly allow you know our SCORM courses published through Lectora or Lectora Online to automatically be loaded from either of those uh, editing programs directly into Course Mill. So there's no, no going outside of the programs to load the courses. Uh, we provide notifications. We have a very configurable system. We provide custom uh, UI uh, for the product. Uh, it is fully integrated with the Course Mill mobile product, which I think you and I are gonna talk about later. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do have, uh, a talent management partner uh, with the product as well, where we can work with uh, uh, skills and competencies and all the things that an HR department would want uh, to manage their employees. Uh, Course Mill Wave is our social uh, LMS, if you will. It's it's not so much a, a LMS as it is a content sharing platform. Okay. And uh, it provides a very quick uh, ability to bring it up. I I personally uh, use it for all of my travel. So in addition to posting my travel pictures on uh, Facebook or LinkedIn, I create a site on Wave and I use that and share that with all my family members. Uh, they can comment on pictures I've posted. I can comment back. It's a very nice vehicle for something simple like that. It's also a great vehicle for anyone that wants to uh, work with their customers. If you're building courses through Lectora and you want to be able to share those uh, with your with your customers who may not have access to ReviewLink, uh, certainly that is another vehicle that you could use would be uh, the Course Mill Wave. That sounds interesting. I, I haven't really looked at Course Mill Wave before and from what you're saying, I need to. Um, I'm going to take a quicker look at it and get get more familiar with it. Now, a, a lot of talk is going on about using LMSs for different things other than just tracking a course or tracking completion. Can, can you talk a little bit about using an LMS like Course Mill or or maybe Wave to help with people after they've bought a product? Certainly, that's. There are a number of uh, companies that we have using the Course Mill product um, really for their clients, for their uh, yeah, their audience that has purchased their product. Like a very large uh, plumbing fixture company based in Wisconsin uh, has been a customer of ours for a number of years. And they use uh, Course Mill with Lector courses in it, and they do a fantastic job of building these courses. Uh, to demonstrate to customers how to install products or how to repair products, uh, both through um, 
agents in the big box stores that you could think of, Lowe's and Home Depot and Menards, but also directly to the customers themselves if they log on to uh, their particular website. And uh, that's been very valuable to them. They get a lot of good feedback about that. Uh, their courses, are, as I mentioned, are just exceptionally well done uh, and it, it works quite well. We have uh, several dozen customers in course mill, or in using course mill in that fashion where they're actually educating the public rather than just an internal audience. Uh, a lot of those companies also use it for their internal audience, but uh, it seems to be a trend. Uh, we're going to, you know, pushing the envelope and uh, trying to get people to watch a, uh, a how-to or, you know, a DIY mm -hmm. uh, video uh, through Course Mill that's served up to a customer. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense because a lot of the retailers sell a lot of different brands. And what's one of the differentiators, aside from the fact that the customer provides good clients, well, I shouldn't say the customer, the, many, the retailer provides good customer support, they have to train their staff. And that's not as easy for most of them as, as people think. So a good differentiator is training. I know Best Buy, for example, does a lot of training of their sales reps or, or floor associates, and they constantly take different training from different manufacturers. And it's a big differentiator because otherwise they know nothing. And uh, so, it's a, it's a, so that's a good trend. Um, I know people actually using Corsmo right now. I have a good friend. Uh, he's been on the show, Dr. Dave Lukasik, and he uses it for, I forgot how many branches. Uh, he's got about 2,500 people, uh, many branches all across the U.S. He uses it not only to do the internal training, but also product training and other things. It's a, again, same idea. It works beautifully for that. Now, yeah, Dave's a great guy. Uh, you know, I can't, Dave. I can't say enough good things about him. He really is a very sharp gentleman. I enjoy mm -hmm. working with him. Uh, I, I think I learn as much from him as he learns from me. So, uh, and, and the nice yeah, thing he, about Dave, he's sort of like the old commercials uh, for the cereal, Mikey. He likes it. When Dave likes something, boy, it's got to be good. Um, he's yeah. not one to like a lot of things. And, and that's what we appreciate about him because he's the kind of guy that keeps you on top of your game to make sure you do a good job and um and boy he he loves what you guys have done with uh like with i'm sorry with what well, with lectora with chorus mill and also with the chorus mill uh, analytics or report writing do you want to talk a little bit about that i'd be glad to it, it was a feature we added into the product about a year ago uh, we did an analysis of the current reporting that was in the product at the time we supplied about 20 standard reports that were uh, driven by configuration options. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know you could, within the report, then select different items that you wanted to use for sorts and selects. Uh, looking at, court, at report writers, you know, I, I come from a, an information systems background where we use things like Cognos. Mm -hmm. uh, and in, in those report writers are extremely powerful, but also extremely expensive. So we went on a search and we located several potential partners. Uh, we ended up with a partner that had a product called Informer and we white labeled that and completely integrated it inside of course metal so that uh, there was no uh, login that you need to do with the SSO is already there. It's completely tied to our database. Uh, we provide that with about 50 pre-designed uh, pre reports and another 20 to 30 dashboards. Uh, they also have a, a piece of it called a live Excel, which allows you to uh, have an Excel file uh, icon on your desktop. You simply click that. It'll immediately talk back to the course mill database without you logging in the course mill, uh, refresh the data and then provide that back to you. Uh, it's great for board meetings. It's, it's great for manager meetings and uh, really has been uh, well adopted and accepted uh, by our customer base. Uh, I don't know any new customer we've installed in the last six to nine months that didn't include that in their package. And from what I heard, it's it's a steal. It's it's very good value um, for the money. 
So I've, I've been hearing it, that from quite is. a few people. And, and our friends in our friends in in, uh, in Intrinsic, who which is the company, uh, have been a fantastic partner. Uh, I I can't think of a a time when I've worked with a better partner in my you know almost thirty year career in in this business. That's great. Well, you and I share another thing in common. Uh, I also come from an IT background. I was 25 years in IT, so um, then I went down the multimedia rabbit hole. I don't know how that happened, but um, people ask me, what did you do before? Well, I was a vice president of IT, and they look at me and go, what are you doing now? Multimedia. <laughs> and, and it's a good change. I enjoy it. It's different, um, but it is a lot of fun. Now, talking about financial, not financial, but reporting and and LMSs. Why do you think so many managers in corporations or agencies are so afraid or so hesitant to get into the LMS and actually look at things? Well, I think, you know, one of the things that we looked at when we were uh, deciding on a report writer, was we, we did look at a lot of our competitors and uh, it's easy to do, you know, so if we go out to YouTube and there are plenty of videos there, one of the things we wanted to deliver was the ability for a manager uh, and or and or their administrative assistant to be able to have uh, icons or a folder with icons on their desktop so that they could simply go right there and get that data immediately. Mm -hmm. Now, that's something that is a little unique to us. Uh, a lot of times training with a manager, particularly in a company that's uh, you know, national here in the States or global as, uh, you know, our, our Procter & Gamble partners uh, are, uh, it's sometimes hard to train those managers, both finding the time to train them, uh, but also finding, uh, you know, time that, that is good for them to really learn what you're trying to teach them. So the ability to stack a set of icons on a desktop or, or stack a set of icons inside of a folder on a desktop that all they have to do is click on that icon and it brings up a dashboard which then allows them to drill down into the specific mm -hmm. data was a real key for us uh you know for this product and it, it saves them from having to remember in some cases a username and a password or it saves them from having to uh, know how to navigate through a series of reports in many products, uh, you know, that are on the market today, a manager might go in and there could be, you know, 50 to 100 different reports there that they didn't have to choose. Much easier putting that on the desktop and then letting them click an icon and it brings the data right to them. You know, in, in a little bit, it's sort of like, I'll, I'll take us back 20 plus years, 25 years to executive information systems, which used to call cost two to three hundred thousand dollars and they pretty much do what your report writer does now because it can give you a ton of information at your fingertips like you said without that expensive cost of the old days uh, that's that's something that that we've seen very true i i hadn't heard that term in a while now but now that you use it yes it it uh used to strike fear into the heart of many <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's but, true. Uh, yes, it. it um, you know, I I use it myself just to keep tabs on you know our own systems internally, and it's uh, I have a folder on my desktop. I simply click into it, pull up the report, see how things are going. Uh, so we're, it's not only used for our customers. We we eat our own lunch here. We you know we use it ourselves. That's great. Now one of the trends in the industry is obviously mobile, and and. As much as sometimes we all say, well, mobile, come on, how many companies are going to allow it? And it is becoming prolific, especially from an end user point of view or customer points of view. Where do you see mobile going and, and how do you think that will affect the, the learning management workspace? That's a that's a great question. Uh, from my perspective, I work with over 400 companies globally that use Course Mill as their learning management system. Mm -hmm. And of course, delivering it as we spoke earlier to multiple audiences. Uh, one of the things I'm seeing, particularly in the EU, in Asia, uh, Australia, uh, 
and and to some extent uh, Brazil, South America, is delivery of the content via the cell phone. Uh, and if you look at you know laptop trend sales here in the states, they really have been declining for the last few years, and tablet and pad sales have also been declining. Mm -hmm. But you know the cell phone is becoming ever more powerful. So we really believe, and, and I think I'm seeing the evidence of it, that delivery of the content to a smartphone is where everything is going to be. And, and the change is going to happen, I believe, much more rapidly than people anticipate, uh, particularly for the development of new courses. I can give you an example of a customer that we have using our mobile product, uh, Procter & Gamble, one of the world's largest uh, product companies, and they use it to deliver daily messages to their uh, North American sales staff. Sometimes the messages are simply a, an MP3, somebody speaking about a new product and a particular feature that they want all their salespeople to have that day. Uh, it may be a video of something that uh, they've taken, they want all their salespeople to watch that day. So it, it is truly just-in-time learning delivered directly to that that mobile device that the user has. And with Course Mobile, you can do that. Uh, you don't have to log in to get the course. It comes to you. Uh, it shows up in your mobile app. And we have an iOS and an Android app. Uh, you take the course. If it's a SCORM course or, or an MP4 you've put in a SCORM wrapper, it will pass all the standard SCORM data right back to you. So you have it to report on, you know, which salespeople in their case uh, watch the video, how long they watched it, did they watch it through conclusion. Uh, so it's a, um, it's going to change the game a lot. So, and and that allows Corsmo Mobile to work offline and then back online to resync? Yes, it does. Right. Uh, we can actually send you the course uh, over the, the cell uh, network and you'll take it. And then once it detects an internet connection, it will actually pass that uh, SCORM data back up to you uh, through that connection. You don't even have to do it. It knows to do it itself. It'll do that sync and send it back up to the system. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. And that's currently available. Yes, yes. We have it deployed um, here in the States, uh, in, in, in the EU, uh, in Asia, and Australia. And I'm working with a company in India uh, I have five trials currently in India with uh, several that are looking very promising. That's great. That's good. So how much do you see mobile taking over in terms of people interacting? I think it's really going to change the way that we, uh, we think about e-learning. And some of the things, enhancements that we're looking at in our mobile uh, product uh, really is the ability for the end user then to contribute to, uh, shall we say, a line of learning. Uh, so that uh, if it's a particular video uh, about a product on a shelf or uh, a topic of any sort, you know, in today's e-learning, uh, it's pretty difficult to, you know, take my, my phone, do a little video of that, and then send that back up and allow others who are interested in that topic to see it. Mm -hmm. uh, we believe that that will become a very important part of e-learning so that we, uh, it, it's uh, more of a learning community, if you mm -hmm. will. Uh, so someone could put a topic out, you know, people could get that on their phone, see it, and then respond back with their ideas, their thoughts, uh, that may be unique to their situation, but would be important for everyone in that learning community to know and understand. So in essence, it's the convergence of social media, collaboration tools, learning management, e-learning authoring tools, kind of really all into one. Yes, absolutely. And, um, you know, we're, we're working very hard behind the scenes, very diligently to, uh, upgrade our app you'll see some interesting things in the in the first part of the year uh, on that I hope uh, knock on wood <laughs> and uh, uh, it, it will incorporate some of those features and I think that's just the start uh, of, of the growth of that in our industry and I think again it's going to happen more rapidly uh, than many anticipate yeah 
I can see. It. And you know, it's interesting. You you made a comment about iPads or, or tablets on the whole. Sales are down. I don't know if uh, sales are down, but I don't think that's because the market's saturated. I think it's because everybody who has one doesn't want to upgrade every year. And the vendors keep coming out with new, 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 and there's too many. There's a there's a there's a ton of Android tablets. Some of them are very cheap. You've got Amazon tablets. You've got the Apple tablets, and people go. I think I've had enough tablets. My my Air One or my Air Two is good enough. And uh, now I'm one of those. I'll buy every one of them. And even I'm going. You know, I think I'm done. <laughs> I've got five yeah. tablets. I can only use one at a time. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it, and you know, I, I'm like you. I have several of them, and I've, I've passed them on to my children as I get <laughs> tired of them, and they play with them, and I don't know where they go from there. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I recently just bought a, uh, a Note uh, 5, mm -hmm. and uh, I use it quite a bit, uh, you know, for about everything that I do. And I'm, I'm so accustomed to using it to watching videos and everything else on it that uh, my, my, yeah, my note five <laughs> my note five <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, love I mean, this phone yeah the the sizes of the phones have really gotten to the point where you can do yeah. anything on them that you want and why carry around a large tablet you know un unless I'm going into a presentation where I want to use the tablet right. in the presentation but, but beyond that, my phone really does everything that I need it to do. It, it fits nicely in my pocket. And, you know, the battery life on it's a little better than my tablet. <laughs> so, you know, it kind of just makes sense. We're, I, at, to some extent, we're spoiled here in the States a little bit in that we have so many options. We also have access to, you know, continuous electricity. As I'm learning, yes. as we're selling these things in other countries, uh, you know, the electricity's on maybe a few hours a day and then off for a few hours a day. Right. And, you haven't, you uh, haven't been to California in a while. <laughs> really help that out. Yeah, and, and you haven't been to California. We have a lot more blackouts than we used to. <laughs> uh, it's, it's another issue. <laughs> but, but, but really, um, I've lived in countries where blackouts were pretty common here and there. And, and our power is not as reliable as it used to be here in California, at least Southern California. So it's sort of interesting. We, we're, we're going through that. And, and you, know, you can take our power, but don't take our Internet. That's, that's the whole thing here. <laughs> <clears throat> so when we go down, it's painful. Ah, I, that, yes. I can only imagine. Yeah. I, it, we, it, it, it happens here from time to time, too, although... It, it sounds like not as much as it's happening to you. So. Yeah, but um, so this is this is exciting things happening in the world of, of, of learning management and, and where things are going. What, what do you think of the experience API or the Zappy, as some people call it, or the X API? How do you think that that's for those who don't know, that's the old tin can API? It, it finally became formal. How, how is uh, Course Mill addressing that, and and where do you think that's going? Uh, the Zappy API, I think, really opens up uh, training to a lot of new opportunities. Uh, what we're seeing uh, in our product development uh, process is the addition of that, you know, in some, I would say, uh, simplistic uh, introductory forms where we have customers who want to allow a user to um, input, you know, transfer information, if you will, you know, kind of like a college or university would do. I, I took a course, uh, you know, at some other company and I want to be able to get credit for that, you know, here at my new company. Uh, can I do that? Well, Zappy works great for that. Uh, but I think we're also going to see it, you know, much like mobile, I think it's going to uh, allow users to become contributors. Uh, and I think we're going to see that grow. Uh, and, uh, you know, if I had, uh, if I could look ahead three or four years, I think it's going to change the LMS market considerably because companies are becoming more socially oriented in their learning internally. I mean, we, we see it in a lot of our customers. I know our competitors see it in theirs. And it's been a little difficult to 
uh, get those customers, the, the companies themselves sometimes to accept that. And I think Zappi will do that uh, because they'll see the value of that contribution of their employees uh, in, in learning teams, uh, learning communities inside of those companies. And, and I really do think that's going to make a, a, a change in the way that, that the content arrives, uh, the quality of the content or the timeliness of the content, maybe a better statement there. You know, one of the things that's been going on with the LMS world is that, and to a point, it, it's not a problem with the LMSs. It's a problem with the corporations who are looking for compliance. They're looking for HR, legal. And, and sadly, in many cases, they've sort of co-opted the LMS from a useful tool to a launch report, you're done. And, and, and I think that's taking where an LMS could be many steps backward, especially in the terms of, of, of talent management and, and performance. We, we want to indemnify ourselves versus actually educate. And there's so much of an LMS that few people use. Are you finding that slowly that's changing or are we getting more into that where we're indemnifying rather than taking advantage of all of the features of an LMS to really judge performance, take a look at, let's say, like a balanced scorecard approach of how are the, the resources in a company, the employees, the people, how are they benefiting from the training, from all the things they're doing, whether they're operational, theoretical? I, I asked you about 20 questions in one. That's really a bad interview technique, but, <laughs> but, but in essence, do you see the LMS, the role of the LMS, being fulfilled more in the future? Whereas right now, I think LMSs have a ton of features that aren't being used. Yeah, I, I believe I would agree with you on that. Um, you know, certainly all the products, you know, uh, uh, Course Mill and its competitors have a lot of features that, that don't get used. I think we, you know, as product companies have put uh, features and functions in our products that we anticipated our our uh, customers would use, and then you know maybe they didn't use them as much or at all in some cases. Uh, so I, I don't know that we wasted time. It was certainly a, an R and D experiment in in many ways, uh, as I talked to my colleagues you know in the field. But um, but I do think the LMS is changing. I think you've hit on a very important point there. You know, the LMS is, is not just a delivery tool or, or I believe will not just be a delivery tool for the com internal compliance uh, courseware. I mean, that, that will always, of course, be there because of the legal constraints that uh, corporations are under. But I believe uh, we're starting to see with a number of our customers that it's expanding out. Uh, I gave you the Procter & Gamble mm -hmm. example of the, the sales division there you know, working with all their salespeople on a, on a daily or, or a, you know, really even a couple of times, it's been you know, multiple times a day, they push out something that's, uh, you know, a learning experience. But we're also seeing it with some of our other customers where they're pulling in different people and doing uh, different activities. So I, I think it, while maybe a little slower than uh, some of us, uh, you and I might like, because we see the value in it, uh, Corporate minds are changing, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it will be for the better, and it, it's going to ex expand the scope of the LMS into areas where it's not today, and uh, hopefully we're able to keep up with that expansion and, uh, you know, all deliver quality products. At least uh, that's my plan. So, <laughs> now are, are, are you seeing more integration, especially in larger companies, with data warehousing systems where all of the – training information, the learning data, if you will, gets analyzed after the fact? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Uh, I think Dave Lukasik is a good example of that uh, because he, you can use our reporting tool and it can connect to other databases uh, mm -hmm. for no fee, no additional cost. Uh, it, it can connect to other databases and we're seeing that at some other customers too as we're you know, really maturing that product in the market with our customer base. So you can go in and pull additional data out, uh, tie that to your learning data, 
and uh, do some longitudinal studies on the success of that that training. Uh, also on the success of retaining employees. That's something I'm I'm yeah. starting to hear a little more about. You know, if if employees are trained properly and and the training was good, high quality training, uh, they tend to stay around a little longer because the company has made that commitment to you know to that employee. Uh, so you, you, you pick when you sit in my seat, you pick up certain little uh, tidbits of information here and there. And uh, yeah, I, I, the, the LMS is is definitely changing. Uh, and, uh, you know, the delivery of that with mobile combined with the, the ability to do cross database reporting uh, is, you know, where we're at with our products. And we think we're in a good spot. That's great. That's actually really a, a good outlook for the future too, because you know more often than not, people don't like their LMSs, and in some in some cases, and I can think of some very expensive ones that that probably deserve that reputation. Um, they don't like. It's hard. They're hard to work with. Uh, they're hard to work with the vendors. I mean, we've we've been work we've worked on over fifteen of them, and and Course Mill is actually probably one of my favorites, if not my favorite. And what I like about it is clean interface, easy to use, easy to set up. I don't want to search for things. And it's very easy to find everything in CourseMail. To me, that's that's a, a very good design principle that, that Trivantis on the whole has done on all the products. So kudos to you guys on that because it does make a difference, especially to, to an end user. And, and, and also, you have a hosted and an in-house solution. You could do it one of both ways right yes we're really one of the few lms's that still provide an enterprise solution mm -hmm. and we do have about 40 percent of our customer base that is okay. enterprise so yeah. uh, we handle that a little differently than the, the previous people that provided an enterprise solution uh, we do the install for the customer on their server mm -hmm. we make sure it's set up properly we give them all the support that they need uh, literally hours and hours of support to make sure that's set up and working. And we also manage all of the upgrades. So our, you know, typically we put out two releases a year, two dot releases, and uh, we do all of those uh, because we want to make sure they go in quickly. We want to make sure that what we put in works and we want to make sure that the people there know the new features that they, they've been given and if they want to use them, that they can be very quickly turned on and access, you know, throughout the corporation. Uh, so that that to us is a very important part of our strategy. Uh, we will continue to do that, and uh, we're we're actually, if you get a chance uh, and you want to look at a new technology that we have uh, recently deployed for that, it's called Docker, and Docker is a means to uh, provide in a small packet everything that you need to run an enterprise uh, application. Uh, so it, if, okay. yeah, if you get a chance to do a show on Docker sometime, I'd be happy to hop on there or one of my engineers who actually worked on the project would, uh, would certainly be happy to hop on. We will, that sounds interesting. Very interesting. So one more thing, I know we're running out of time. Let's talk a little bit about support. You are also the vice president of global support at Trivantis. So you get you get everything coming by. You've got your LMS, you've got your support. Um, what's what's new, improved, what's different? And and just from a user, we've been Lectora users for 10 years, always had good, good luck with support. You guys are good. You guys have always been helpful and uh, very quick to move up the ladder in case the person doesn't know the answer. Um, many, many times we've been stuck on something and a little bit of code snippets from you folks get us right going. So, so very, very happy with the level of support you folks have provided. Um, what new things are you doing? Well, most recently, uh, we did revise the support page as of last week, in fact, and uh, we will continue to work on that, uh, adding uh, quick links to what we perceive to be the uh, questions of the day or the questions of the week that we seem to be getting. And there is a trend in that. You can predict the trend in that. And so we're trying to provide the information when the user comes to the support page, they may see a link that, oh yeah, this would answer my question. I don't even have to put in a support call. So you'll, you'll notice that's out there today. 
And then uh, we are in the process of adding uh, a chat. So on, mm -hmm. on the support page, uh, certain times of the day, there will be support reps assigned to manage chat. Uh, one of the things that we kind of discover in that is the, the chat is a way to sort of help the user narrow down you know, some of the questions they have. And then typically that's a, the, the follow on to that is to enter a support call, send us a copy of, you know, in the case of Lectora, the AWT file so that we can go through that with them and then get back to them much more quickly. So we save both uh, the user's time and our own time by using that type of function. Um, and by the way, you know, you're you, one of the few vendors who actually asks people to send code and help with it. So that's actually pretty unique in and of itself. Well, it, it really makes it easy, I think, for our customer base to get where they're going more quickly. And that's our goal. You know, get get those courses right. Make sure they're providing all the information that the customer needs so that it's talking back to their LMS. We, we'd like that LMS to be course mail, but make sure it's talking back to whatever LMS they're using. And uh, they can be proud of their work and can kind of be heroes, you know, uh, for e-learning inside of their company. Uh, okay. it's our goal to make them look good. And uh, we, we try very hard at that. Uh, we have a great staff. I, I thank you for your compliment. I really appreciate that. I'll pass that on to them. Uh, you, know, we, uh, you know, we do have days when uh, the Nerf guns come out and we have a, a Nerf battle in the, in, the <laughs> in the group just to you know, knock the tension off a little bit. But a uh, great group of people and uh, we really enjoy what they do. Yeah, and I remember years ago, you had about three guys in support. We always, it was Randy and a couple of others. And, you know, they were always there. Um, we've had many occasions where we've been in front of clients and we ran into a browser issue. You know, it's, especially when you deal with a modern day client and they're using very antiquated IE6 and you just go, oh no, six. And usually we ask. And the one time we don't ask, we get burned. Um, there's a lot of old browsers. I've told people for years, don't blame Lectora. It's the browser, stupid. Um, but but it is the browser. Uh, you know, you can render HTML, the same HTML differently on every single browser. Just enough. Just enough differences. Kerning is different. Line spacing is different. Um, and, and that's the good, so that's the easy stuff. Wait till you get to the hard stuff. So I'd say you guys do a really good job of supporting a difficult environment. At best appreciate that we we do have kind of a uh, a machine museum <laughs> uh in there where uh you know we have probably a dozen different machines mm -hmm. from the last seven or eight years uh that we can go back and test on for that exact reason that you just mentioned uh we, you know, we keep uh, a lot of old laptops nowadays because sometimes well okay lms's and vpn our biggest our biggest headaches as far as browsers vpn is not much better um <clears throat> it's a it's a whole different world with a vpn but no you guys do do a very good job on that so so being being uh, on top of that um department you, you've done great work we appreciate it thank you so yeah I, I know a lot of support departments that always get beat up but you know it's most of the time it's unfair and and you guys have been good no 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 complaints so and believe me i can complain so <laughs> uh i have been the bane of some vendors existence so i believe me <laughs> yeah we we try we try very hard so yeah appreciate that well well john i really appreciate you coming on last moment today and sharing a little bit of what's well going on with the lms and when wave and and the report writing uh, it, it's all exciting it, there's good stuff coming and that's what that's what makes me more excited that more opportunities and um, so uh, again appreciate you coming on and uh, we'd love to have, to have you back on again and talk about docker I don't know that much about docker so I've heard of it but I haven't really done much with it so I'm, I'm interested that sounds really good be, be glad to and uh, it, it is it is worth uh, investing the time in it. It's an incredible technology. That sounds great. So we are at the end of our show. So thank you for coming on. And if you're watching the show on YouTube, please subscribe. Give us a thumbs up, whatever that does, and just 
feels good, I guess. But um, but we'd love to hear from you. Give us your feedback, and we will get back to you quickly. For Lectora Live, I'm Rick Zanotti. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye, everyone.